Jesus' name. Wow. Merry Christmas, everyone. I am so glad to be here with you. I feel the presence of the Lord. Did you not enjoy that worship and that praise? It just seems to get better and better, the presence of God, just so attracted uh, to our singing. I love it. I am um, so fired up about finishing 2023 with, I'm telling you, fireworks in this room. This morning and next Sunday, absolutely explosion fest, if we can, I don't even know if that's a word, we just made it up. (laughs) but an explosion in this place of the presence and power of God. Karen said about the gentleman we're flying in, he had already planned his own funeral. I texted him this morning, how you doing? He says, I feel amazing. I texted him earlier in the week, I said, how you doing? He says, I feel like a million bucks. I don't know if you've ever been that close to death, three-second encounter in those baptismal waters will now allow him to see his children graduate from high school. Come on now, somebody. I want you to stand to your feet. I want to read the scripture to you today. um, I'm, I'm just really excited about this time of the year. We're going to close 2023 with a bang, and we're going to open the door to 2024 I'm telling you, we're not just going to walk through it. We're going to kick the door down. And we're going to go through it with some attitude. Not a prideful attitude, not a braggadocious attitude, but uh, an attitude that I'm in it to win it. I didn't come to take part, I come to take over. Can you walk with me through that door? How many of us have been tired of the devil's mess in 2023, all right? Um, We're going to walk with such authority and power and dominion in 2024 that we're going, it's going to alarm us as to the miracles that we're going to see and the revival that is going to be spreading throughout the nation. There's such a hunger across the land right now. I'm doing an event January 8th and 9th in Bakersfield, California. Uh, they've sold the event out. They registered, not sold. They registered and sold it, whatever you want to terminology. I just say sold it out. They didn't charge anything, but they sold it out. Now they're doing overflow for two nights. The first night we're there, they already have registered over 300 immersions. And they've got four small baptismal tanks. So I told the pastor, I said, it ain't going to work. I may need to get some of y'all start driving right now with one of these in a U-Haul. Go fill it up. But anyway, I'm telling you, there's hunger across the land. Luke chapter 4, is that where I told you to go? Luke chapter 4, Jesus preaches his first message. He says, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. He reads from the precious, precious book of God. Verse 18, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, and to set at liberty those who are oppressed, and to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. This was Jesus' first day to speak in church, and he read this scripture as a fulfillment of his life. I want to read it again, verse 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, he says, because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. Can somebody say amen right there? He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted and to proclaim liberty to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind and to set at liberty those who are oppressed and to proclaim the acceptable Year of the Lord. You may be seated. There has been not one figure, not one life, no politician, dictator, doctor, explorer, scientist, educator, 
ruler, emperor, president, king, however, that has had a bigger impact on humanity than the one life, Jesus. That one individual. No nation, no discovery, no military, no ideology, no philosophy. No one has had a larger impact on humanity than Jesus. And we stand today, we are gathered in this room today to celebrate that one life, that one life. We all know the particulars that go around our holidays, Christmas, Easter, all of those things that we celebrate. But it is not about the gift exchange today or tomorrow. It's not about the tinsel on the trees. It's not about the lights. It's not about um, hanging out, fellowshipping, and drinking eggnog. Oh, my Lord, I don't know how you do that. But anyway... I know, I know some of you, I mean, some of y'all get drunk and not drunk on it, but you like, get, you kind of like, but it's not about the eggnog. Touch somebody and just say that. Would you just help me out? It's, it's about a child that came and was placed in a manger wrapped in swaddling clothes and grew up to be a man and who died for us on a cross and was resurrected on the third day and who now brings liberty, peace, deliverance, hope, and salvation to the entire world. Our celebration this morning is about a man and his name's Jesus. Can somebody say amen right there? Speaking of a man, it's my honor to introduce to you, I just want him to stand, a dear friend of mine, I've known him for now going on, three decades, over three decades, John Uga, all the way from Nigeria. Would you stand, Pastor John? I don't, I don't know of another man in all of Nigeria that has had a greater impact on that nation. Uh, we have literally, we would preach to tens of thousands of people back in the day and minister, but he did it because of one man. He travels the world because of one man. I want to talk to you about an issue today, just very simple and very uh, concise, if you will. I want to talk about what motivated Jesus. I want you to go in your Bibles to a couple of passages of Scripture. I want you to go to Matthew chapter 20, and I want to read verses 29 through 30. Matthew chapter 20, 29 through 30. The Bible says in verse 29, now as they went out of Jericho, a great multitude followed him and behold, two blind men sitting by the road. When they heard that Jesus was passing by, cried out saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Then the multitude warned them that they should be quiet, but they cried out all the more saying, have mercy on us, O Lord, son of David. Don't you love the tenacity? The more the religious crowd said, be quiet, the louder they got. I'm telling you, there's something about the cry of the heart that says, God, will you have mercy on me that Jesus takes notice of? It says in verse 32, so Jesus stood still, called them and said, what do you want me to do for you? And the Lord said, and they said to him, Lord, that our eyes may be open, verse 34, so Jesus had compassion and touched their eyes. And immediately their eyes received sight. In the moments that we have together today, I want to talk to you about compassion. Last Sunday morning, I released you to go throughout your entire family meetings and gatherings and pray two prayers. God, where are you working today? Will you show me where you're working in the lives of the people that I love? And God, how can I help you help them? 
Those two prayers will change your life, the trajectory of your life. God, where are you working in the people around me? And number two, God, how can I help you help them? How can I help you reach them? All of that is wonderful and good, but it will fall somewhat short if we are not clothed with compassion. You see, today and tomorrow, and really by, not by the end of the year, you're going to be meeting people and surrounding yourself with folks that are experiencing hard circumstances. Their life has taken a turn and twist. And if you would have asked them five years ago, do you see yourself in this position? They would have looked you in the eye and said, life could not get any better. But because of relationships perhaps that have gone south, job opportunities that have turned sour, loved ones that have left them, abandoned them, now people find themselves in circumstances that are extremely difficult. How many of you know someone like that? That holiday season to them is painful. It's difficult. They see no joy. They experience no laughter. On the outside, they may have a smile. They may giggle. They may laugh at a joke. But on the inside, there's an inferno of pain. It is torturous. It's damaging. It's affecting their health their psyche. I feel in this season, as we're asking God to give us things and our loved ones to bring us things, I want you to be a conduit of the love of God. You don't have to preach a sermon. You don't have to deliver a message. But God could use you to help him reach them. He has come to bring us peace. Isaiah 53 says the chastisement of our peace was upon him. He says, I have come during this time to bring good tidings of great joy. I want you to be a vessel of joy. I want you to see yourself as a faucet. As you turn on the faucet, as you get out of your car, I want you to say, God, would you turn the faucet of love and peace and joy into my life so that as I go through this door, I'm going to encounter all types of hurt and pain. You're going to walk into a room and there are teenagers who are being bullied online. You may not know it. You may not sense it, but it's happening. There'll be others that have harmed themselves and cut themselves and even planned their own suicide. You had no idea. But you are not just an individual to receive the season. This is the greatest season of the year where people understand that Jesus, the son of God, came. I'm asking you to pray a prayer with me in just a few moments. God, will you open the faucet of joy and tenderness and kindness and love in my life that as I walk through this door, that the glory of God is so on me that those who wanted to call it quits, those that wanted to walk out, those that wanted to give up, those that did not want to go to work the next day, did not want to stay home, did not want to be with their family any longer, that God, something among these people, in these people, pouring out of these people, as soon as you walk across the threshold, the glory of God permeates every square inch of the room. How many people believe that that is possible? You're not going to leave this place the same. You're not going to leave this house the same. I want our hearts to be tenderized. I want us to be filled with compassion. Ten times in the New Testament, your Bible says that Jesus was moved with compassion. Oftentimes in the church, we have all the dogma, all the doctrine, all of our I's dotted and T's crossed and our theological, you know, uh, 
constructs are in place and we can become like robots. Oh, there's Aunt Sue, she's a Christian. We can't cuss around her. Oh, there's Uncle Bob, hide the liquor. You know, we can't do that. And, and, and so they know us as devoted people of God. And so they, 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 they monitor and govern their activity because they respect you. What about walking into a room and the glory of God so rests upon you and your family that it's not having a modification of behavior because you're in the room simply because you do right and they don't want to be embarrassed by doing wrong, but there is a melting. There is this presence. There's the aura. There's this, this, this glory that just comes out of you that just wrecks them on the inside. I mean, it pulverizes their heart in a good, compassionate, tender kind of way that they go, my Lord, my heart's not right. My life's not right. I'm out of balance. I'm out of tune. Why do I feel that I need to get right with God when I'm around you? Come on, just stand to your feet for a moment. I, I want to bless you. I want to pray for you. Ha. Just lift your hands. If you're at home, just stand up and lift your hands as well. Father, I thank you that I am standing in the midst of people that are hungry for you. We take no glory in our flesh and no pride in anything we've done or even can do, but God, we want to be vessels that's useful to you. God, I want this compassion that moves you to take action. Come on, keep your hands up for a moment. God, I pray for a baptism of compassion in my life among the people I do life with. Oh, God, touch your people. And everybody in this room said amen. Just remain standing. I feel in my spirit there are people in this room. You're far from God. And you feel what I just explained a moment ago. You feel your heart being there, it's, it's a steady vibration in your spirit. You're going, I need to leave. And if I stay here, I may not recognize myself when I walk out. And in your mind, you're racing. What would my friend think if I changed so drastically? Would they laugh at me, mock me, make fun of me? And so you're scared. You're, you're scrambling right now. Do you hear what I'm saying? In my spirit, I sense that there are people scrambling. You're thinking, I... Everything I feel feels right. Everything that I'm hearing sounds right. Everything that I, I've longed for is right in front of me, but yet I'm scared. I'm nervous. I don't know what I have to give up. I don't know who it'll impact. I don't know if it'll change my career. I don't know if it'll change my family. I don't know. But I'm here to tell you that God is a God that loves you and cares for you, and he will not take from you other than the pain and your sin and your shame and your abandonment. He says, I've come to give you peace, hope, life, and love. Bow your heads. If that's you, I don't know. It may be one person. It may be one young teenager. Maybe a dad, a spouse. If that's you, and you say, I have to get right with God right now. I feel his presence, his love, his peace, his mercy. If that's you, would you raise your hand so I can see it? Anybody in this room? Anybody in the room? Anybody in the room? Anybody in the room? Yeah. Anybody? Lord, we thank you. God, I thank you that you're moving in this room. You're moving, Lord, like a fire hose. Thank you, God, that we'll never be the same. Somebody needs to get born again right now. You're not saved. You're not born again, but you need to be born again. I'm going to ask you right now, raise your hand. Pastor, I need to be saved. I'm not saved. I thought I was saved, but I'm not saved. I want to be born again. Anybody in the room, raise your hand. I want to see it. Anybody in the house? Anybody in the house? Father, I thank you 
I thank you, Lord, for the overwhelming glory that I'm feeling in my body, in, my, in, in this room. I bless these people in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated real quick. I'm almost done. Can you believe it? I want to give you one statement, then I'm going to pray for you one more time. I got seven minutes. I know, listen, I said, I'm going to be done today. As long as the Lord's moving, I'm going to move. But when he's done, I'm done. Okay, you hear what I'm saying? Not that he's done, but sometimes we just stay too long. Not, I love two-hour church service, but I'm telling you, the Lord said, I want you to be done. Tell him what I want them to know. Give it to them and pray over them. I'm going to give you one statement. Write it down, okay? Everybody say compassion. I want you to say it like you mean it. When you ask God when you ask God to make you like Jesus in this area of compassion you have to prepare yourself to see all around you pain suffering hurt Loneliness, despair, and abuse. When you ask God to make you like Jesus in this area, to have compassion, you have to prepare yourself to see all around you, listen to me, pain and suffering. Lonely people. Broken hearts, abuse, and despair. You're going to walk out of this place with new lenses. An ability to see, not the guy on the side of the road shaking a can. And saying by his own choices, he's experiencing his misfortune. But God's going to allow you to see hurt behind the hurt. Pain beyond the pain. Do you hear what I'm saying? And the Spirit of God's going to speak to some of you to move with compassion on total strangers. On folks that he pulls back the curtain of their life to you. And you ask a question. How can I pray for you? Is there any reason God wants me to pray for you? Listen to the question. I walked by you. And I felt like I needed to pray for you. Is there a reason that God would speak to me? It opens up a conversation. I'm walking through divorce. I have a child that's away from God. I just lost my mother. This happens all the time. And you can move with compassion. It's not always a money thing. Sometimes it's a hug. Sometimes it's a, cold, it's a warm cup of coffee. Cold cup of water. It's an invitation to spend the evening with you and your family at dinner. Let me tell you what God's going to do in 2024 through Christ Fellowship Church. We're going to see power of God like we've never seen him before. I'm telling you, there's an escalation of miracles, Pastor Marty. You've seen it. You've seen it. But it's going to be coupled with such great compassion. They're going to impact our neighborhoods, cities, our schools. Not with dogma, repent and burn and go to hell but with such compassion that people's hearts will be turned. Are you ready for that baptism right now? Stand to your feet. All right, everybody in this room. I'm telling you, I feel God all over this. I'll pick this up sometime in 2024. <laughs> Y'all ready? I want you to extend your hands toward my wife and I. Karen, would you come up here for a second? I want you to pray 
that our hearts, as we move into 2024, would be unlike, our, unlike we've ever encountered before. Just tender, humble, and broken. Would you pray for us for 30 seconds right now? Thank you, Lord. God, we need your wisdom. We need your guidance. Thank you, Lord. Baptize Karen and I with such compassion. As you were moved with it, may we be moved by it. And let me pray for you. Father, I thank you again for Christ Fellowship Church. I thank you that you're moving in this place. I speak, I speak life, hope, new beginnings upon them. Lord, whole family units saved. Whole, Lord, connected family units. I'm not just talking about sons and daughters. I'm talking about cousins and aunts and uncles and grandparents all engulfed with the revival fire. Lord, even if they live in Nevada, they live in Washington, they live in New York, set them ablaze, oh God. Whole family units. God, baptize us with compassion. Immerse us with it. Prepare me for the pain that I will see. And give me what I need to help them. Prepare me for the despair that I will see. We are your light. And the hope of the world, you in us, shine through us. And everybody in this room said amen. Let's give the Lord a hand clap of praise. All right. Yeah. All right, here's what we're going to do. No service tonight. No service tonight, Pastor Marty. None tonight. So um, Wednesday night we'll have service, right? Prayer on Tuesday night. Prayer on Tuesday night. We pray on Tuesday night. We're moving it from tomorrow to Tuesday at 6 o'clock right here in the sanctuary. So come join us. All right? And then Saturday and then Sunday, obviously, uh, revival begins again on the 31st. All right? I love you guys. Now, listen, you owe me 45 minutes. Okay? Are you going to give it to you? You're not going to kick and scream a little bit later, all right? You're going to give me 45 minutes later? I love you guys. Have a great Christmas. See you all.